better. All right, so what you can do is you can, you can color code things. You can say the eight meters length, those go together or correspond. The twelves go together. And the elevens go together. And so, it doesn't matter how you name the first one. What matters is how you name its corresponding triangle. So let's say we named HJK. Let's do JKH. Let's do KHJ. K H J. Okay. So we got to start to it. Now, how do we make this be in the right order? We look at K and we say K has the green and the purple. That means G goes with it. We have to name G first. Now, okay, so then we went to H. H is orange and green. The orange and green vertex is F. And then you're stuck with the last one, which is J. Double check color wise, purple and orange. Pretty nice looking colors together. And D. You're choosing the. Huh? There you go. Oh, sorry. Did we follow that? It's important to have them in the right order, even though we can name the first one however we like, as long as we hit them clockwise or counterclockwise. So we're going to get to where these are different sizes, and it's going to be important to make sure you know what goes with what. And this is how we say it. Or that's one of <clears throat> three ways how we say it. Do you want to talk about any other questions on this, Mr. Dagan? Well, you gave him the cut back, so yep. I don't know, do we? Do <clears throat> you want to ask anything about them? Three. Three. That one's yours. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. But, uh, okay. Here. So, you, so you got ABC. It, it said maybe give it a, give it a drawing. So when I set it up and I drew it on, on the key here, I did something like this right here. I said there's segment AB, and AB had to be a length of, of 8 centimeters. And then angle A was supposed to be 64 degrees. So when I did that, I did 64 degrees. I drew it, I drew it this direction. And then I feel like there's supposed to be more. It says, which of the following lengths for BC does not guarantee a unique triangle? So actually, this side here, which goes out to C, I made it nice and long on my drawing. And, and then if you were to take, you know what, let me, let me do it to scale. That will be, that will be better. Do some kind of scale here. Then we can actually draw the side and make it swing and everything. So I need eight. So I guess it's gonna be a little. No, I'll make it gonna be like this. Okay, so that. We're calling that eight centimeters, and it's 16 of these units. And then we have to have a 64. So it comes up like that. And then so then I extended this out because it doesn't say how long it has to be, or it can be. So it can go forever, or it can be really short. And then it says, 
which does not guarantee a unique triangle? In other words, which of those lengths could you make two different triangles out of? And if we took seven, so what I did is I took my ruler and I said, well, if I put, this is seven from where I'm putting my, this finger here. So if I did this, I can, I can draw this triangle. But no matter what I do, if I, if I change the angle, make it a lesser angle, it doesn't touch. If I make it a greater angle, it doesn't reach. So this is the only way I can draw it with seven centimeters on that side. And then the next one is, is uh, nine. So nine has got to be, if that's nine, let's see, this is 16. It's going to be about like this. So if I have it being nine, nine's got to be 18 on this thing, so I'm doubling it. It's 15, 16, 17. It's got to be a little bit longer. So nine, nine is so long, I couldn't put it along this edge because there's only eight. And all of these lengths from here to here are shorter than eight. So if it goes to nine, then my triangle ends up being something that goes way up there like that. And then at the same time, if it's 12, that's even longer. So I could never go from tw fit 12 in between here and here because this is only eight. So a 12 would have to make even a bigger triangle like this. Can, so, can I, can I jump in? Yeah, you can jump in. Angle? <clears throat> Whatever this length is, we're talking about a side, side angle, which we know in general doesn't work, but when the first side is the bigger compared to the next one that's next to the angle. You have this, which does guarantee a unique triangle. So because this one isn't bigger than that one, it's not s little s a. It's little s, big s a, which we don't have. It is drawable, but okay. it's, it's maybe, you know, just trying to reconnect to that one. Do you okay with that? Okay. Now what? Anything else? Can you do four? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, four. Do you want me to turn that off, though? Um, sure. Okay. Yeah, four was not easiest. The uh, rhombus with two diagonals. Oops. And they give us the information that MAP is 21. So MAP is 21 degrees. And then they say that AMP is 118. So AMP, we can say that this is 118. Erase the, the M. And then, well, let's see. Well, uh, ARL is 126. So A to R to L. This whole thing is 126 degrees. LR is 12 centimeters, and PR is 10. So all the way across here. Nobody got that one wrong. That's right? 10. It's just the angles. Okay. <clears throat> so we have to find the measure of MAR. To find MAR, that's this angle right here. That's 21. So the way I looked at it was this large angle here is 126. 
That's the supplement of 126. The supplement of 126 would be 54. 126 plus 54 is 180. So these two together make 54. So this has to be 54 subtract 21. Then PRL is going to be ooh, real high color. It's going to be the smaller piece of 126. So let's see, what did I do with that one? Um, Yeah, that'd be a good way. Vertical of this is 118. And then um, 21 also goes to the angle and Yeah, so these are cut by a transversal. So that's 21, alternate interior, that's 21. And then um, down into the top and then down into the Yeah, triangle sun theorem. Does that come out to like 41? Yeah. And then half of the diagonal is going to be five centimeters. That's what I have with that. Anything else? Sure. Sorry. I'm sorry? Five. Five. Taylor and Logan. I didn't change the names from last year. <laughs> Taylor and Logan are looking at a quadrilateral. Taylor says it has 180 degree rotation symmetry. Logan says it has two lines of symmetry. If both are correct, in other words, it has both 180 rotation and two lines of symmetry. Um, a rhombus has 180 rotation symmetry, but it doesn't have a weight. Ooh. Ooh. Uh oh. It has two lines of symmetry, doesn't it? Because it has a hundred and eighty degree. Yeah. So a, a rhombus, a rectangle has two lines of symmetry and 180 degrees. Oh, so we should have been oh. putting rhombus up there. The huh? word is, the key word is could, isn't it? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Could. A square has four lines of symmetry. So that's not going to work. So it looks like a rhombus and a rectangle are both going to have 180 degrees rotation symmetry and two lines. So put down a rhombus. For A? Yeah, for letter A. You put down a rhombus. And I, when I wrote the key, I only wrote a rectangle. So you probably lost on that, right? Okay. So we got your test back, okay? Circle it, please. Circle number five. All right. Anybody else? Um, so then for six B, what would B? Is that also? Five B or six B? Five B. Five. Five B. If Taylor is correct, that's one eighty rotation. If only she is correct, and and then it does not have two lines of symmetry. Um, a kite has is one fold. Kite's 360. So 180 degree rotation, and it doesn't have lines of symmetry, makes it a parallelogram. Nothing more. All right. Could it not be an isosceles trapezoid? Uh, an isosceles trapezoid. There's not 180. You have to go 360. 
and it only has one line of symmetry. So that one is not going to fit the bill for either A or B. Okay, anything more? 6B. 6B or A? B. B. Okay. So all that's being said with that sketch is that these two opposite sides are the same, and these are the same but they're saying that they are different in length. It says nothing about the angles. So even though it's drawn relatively square, we could also do this. And this, this is re less restrictive than that, if it had a 90 degree angle on it. So it would be just parallelogram. We can't say it's a rhombus because they all have the same lengths. We cannot say it's a rectangle because it does not show that it has 90 degree angles. Anything more? Yes? How do, you, how do you justify that? How did you justify it? Oh, so you just didn't justify it. Um, let me show you what I have. Did somebody get, um, get that one completely correct? Did you? Do you want to explain it, one of you? I'd like Ooh. Matilda to show hers because yeah, you looked at them. Her, her technique is, is really clarifying. You up um, to it? Can you put it underneath you? I'm not sure how this is good and it's going to be. You don't have to read all of it. You just say yeah. you, you listed the given, yeah. and then you said. I listed the given, and then it's pretty obvious that AE, AB, AC, and AB are all radius of circle A, um, and therefore congruent. So then I could say, or I listed the other given, so angle BAC is congruent to BAB, and through the angle addition assumption, you can say, I, I like changed, I made the different angles kind of into one, two, and three to be easier to understand. So um, angle one plus angle two is equal to EAC, and angle three plus angle two is equal to BAB, and that's angle addition assumption. And then you can say that the different angles added up in like a certain way are equal to the different angles. Like, I don't know how to explain it. It just works in my head. Okay. So, yeah. so you said that these two angles together are equal to those two together. Yes. And because these two add up to the same that those two add up to, mm -hmm. they, have to they have to be congruent. This is in common on both of them. So then, then you used yeah. angle addition assumption for that. Mm -hmm. And then how did you break that apart? Because now you kind of have overlapping. Um, I broke that apart by using the substitution property, which I don't know if that was right. I don't really understand the correction. But um, you can basically say, since two is in common, um, angle two plus three is also able to add up to angle EAC, where usually one plus two 
and vice versa with like the other angle. So you can say that they have that in common, and they're therefore congruent. Um, and then through that congruence, I found um, a side, an angle, and a side. So that proved the two triangles were congruent through the SAS congruence theorem. Thank you. Yeah. Jacob, could you read your statement that um, says how you came up with those two being equal? Yeah, so do you want me to come up with I don't know if you could. So we had very similar up to this point, and then she used the theorem, but I, I just kind of used logic, of, in other words, for lack, of better, for lack of a better word. And so we're given that angle EAC is also congruent to BAD. And since they overlap at the same amount, I said that subtracting the same amount from both angles from from both angles would still give a congruent angle. And then that allowed allowed me to have side angle side as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty clean. Good job. Is that what you, is that what you were wanting? Yeah. Yes. at the end of this chapter. And please say something if you'd like me to get a retake ready. So we have one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Three. Maybe they, they are. Okay, so question on the quadrilaterals. How much would you like to ask about? Seven? Ten, ten and fourteen. Seven, ten, and fourteen. I'm not guaranteeing I'll go over them all today. I might come back tomorrow. Any others? Sir? I'm sorry? Nine. Nine? Yeah. Maybe when you see seven, you'll see nine, too. Okay, so seven is asking for the number of square meters in 6.3 square kilometers. Okay, so let's start with one square K. Looks like this. Is that okay? So this is going to be one kilometer squared because it's one by one on each side. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need to go to meters. So the question is, how far is this in meters? A thousand. And how far is this in meters? A thousand. So to find area, we multiply K by K. So we've got to take meters times meters. So what's a thousand times a thousand? A million. So this turns into a million square kilometers. 
It's the same idea as a foot. A square foot measures 12 by 12. So we have to square that. And we get 144, not 12. And that's because there's, you know, in this case here, you've got 12 rows and 12 columns, and each one of these intersections ends up being a square inch. So can you see then where number nine would go? Square feet and square yards? It's 30 square feet. That's how many square yards? Somebody want to give a suggestion on how to tackle that? is a yard. Three feet. And if it's square, it's going to be like this, right? Mm -hmm. I wish we were in the other room because all those tiles are a square foot, aren't they? The picture those tiles. And so if we were to have one yard by one yard, how many square feet would this be? Three across, three down. So it looks something like that. Each of these is a square foot. So if one square yard is nine square feet, how do we get this to square yards? Multiply it. Here's 9 is equal to 1. So how many would, if you had 18, how many would that be? 18 square feet is how many square yards? So now there's 2. So add on another one. So you add on another square yard, that's 27. And then we have three left over, three square feet left over for a total of 30. So this is what's missing. One square yard, two, three, how much is this? It's hard with the fan. And we all have muzzles on. you got to be loud. A third. a third. Yeah, that's a third of a square yard, isn't it? It's three out of nine. So what you could do is you could just, you could divide this by nine. And there's one set of nine, two sets of nine, three sets of nine, and three out of nine left over. So we could just do that. You could get all styling, and that's equal. So we could say 30 square feet multiplied by one square yard per nine square feet. This is a unit conversion factor. And then square feet cancel. 30 divided by nine is three and a third square yards. There's all this, you know, lots of ways. Grab a piece of graph paper, count them up, do a conversion, and really think about it, check your answer, and make sure it makes sense. You should have a smaller number than what you started with because you have bigger units. Mm -hmm. 
honey planter. Needs to order sod for a football field. I was torn up in recent game play. Million sod for this job size comes on pallets. Each pallet covers approximately 450 square feet. Football field's 120 yards by 50 yards. How many pallets will Lonnie need for this job? So they sell it by square feet, and we're covering square yards. So I think that this idea right here is important. If they're selling it in square feet, and we have to cover square yards, we can use this conversion factor to change square feet into square yards. We can also use it to change square yards into square feet by just flipping it upside down. So if we take the reciprocal of it, we can start with yards, get them to cancel in the multiplication, and end up in square feet. So who thinks they have it? Do you think you have it? Well, let's hold on before we just jump to the answer. Do you think you have it? Did you figure it out? How about over there? Did you guys figure it out? Did you? No? You think you did. How about over here? You think you did? Not sure? No? Okay. So stand up if you think you have it figured out. Please. Stand up if you think you have it figured out. Okay, good. Ooh, okay, all right. So we got three. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of you that aren't standing. So between the eight of you, there can be two, no more than three of you with each of these people. And they're going to try to explain it to you. And when you come back, all three groups are going to have the same answer for me, right? Go. From beginning to end, the whole thing. You got to get move around. Okay, there's four of you there, two or three of you. Why don't you break off and go over there with Titus? Could you? Or, or over here, I guess. Yeah, one way or the other. Thanks. It's pallet of side covers 450 square feet. You've got to cover a football field, which is 120 by 50 yards. How many pallets do you If you can't go to somebody else, look at this. This is a no, no, he made Yeah, 
So then maybe we need to divide it by um, story about Saad. Right before I met Mrs. David, I showed up to the camp that we met at a week early, and they put us to work. And one of the things we did is laid sod. They had a semi-truck full of sod. And we laid the sod, and we carried the sod. Ooh, I'm laying up sod in my life now. Wormy smelling, I bet. Oh, it's just dirt, dirt and muck on your shoulders. And <laughs> it's not in Colorado. Way, way up in the mountains. Put sod up there. Well, they did it. No, it's just around a big, huge environmental education building that they were putting together. Okay. So are we all able to do this one? You sure? No. No, that's not fine. Can you explain it? No. Wait, no. You explained it to once. Titus. Yeah. Yeah. Explain what you did. What did I do? Yeah. Okay. So, the question says that the football field is 120 yards long and 50 yards wide. So I converted those into feet. So, 120 yards is 360 feet, and 50 yards is 150 feet. Pause. Thank you. Exactly? Yes. Wow. So you figured out how many 450 square feet there are in the whole football field by dividing that by 450. So it would be like having 120 squares, each square equal to one pallet of sod, 450 square feet. Had another. You, I went and raised fourteen, yes. and that was it. That was it. So now I'll come back to it tomorrow. Wonder if I can do this. I can yeah. Triangles. They know what triangles are. You guys have. You know the area of a triangle. What's the area of a rectangle? Length times width. Could I change this though? And say that that's the base, like the bottom of the rectangle. And then let's call this the height of the rectangle. 
And the critical thing is that it's a 90 degree angle. If it's not a 90 degree angle, this doesn't work. Like with a parallelogram, we have to work a little differently. We have to make sure we have 90 degree angles. If you don't remember anything about area of polygons, remember this. Measurements somewhere have to be at a 90 degree angle to one another. They have to be. So if we have a triangle, like a right triangle, we can create that by just having a diagonal. So now what is the area of this triangle? It's one half of that. So we could write it like this. One half of base times the height, if you like it that way. Or we could just calculate the base times the height and divide it by 2. Because those two right triangles, we can go through all kinds of proof of that, which you've already done. They're going to be congruent. Okay, so that's one condition. But not all triangles look like this. Some triangles look like this. And they aren't necessarily a 90 degree angle, so we have to look at the triangle differently. So what I will say is this. If we can find this height, again a 90 degree angle, and we can know this base. So in other words, we have two measurements that are perpendicular to one another. We can use the same formula. And here's how we know we can do that. So, um, one way to think of it is like this, visually. Now there's a right triangle on the right hand side, there's a right triangle on the left hand side. So it's like having two smaller right triangles. So like what we, we could do, we could get all fancy with this. We could say if this short little length over here, this triangle on the left has a base of just x, and it's a right triangle. The area of the little triangle on the left that I drew is going to be x multiplied by the height times a half. That's by the right triangle formula. And the, the triangle that's over here to the right is going to be x multiplied by y. And that's going to get multiplied by a half also. And those two triangles, you add them together, you have the whole black triangle that I started with. So there's a picture of adding them together. There's the algebra for adding them together. Yes? Don't you need... Where's the base in that? Oh, the base is in black. I'll come back to the, ba the base in a second. Just be patient, okay? I'm coming there. What is that? Then? So what I'm saying here... This is this triangle. And then half of x, oops, I'm sorry, x times h, x times h. This is the other. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, that's why you guys are here. Thank you. Yeah, that's y times h. There we go. Now I got everything right. There. Yes, y times h. Thank you, Arik. Thank you, Jacob. Okay, so this is the algebra of it right here. And then what we can do is this. We can say that we're multiplying by a half and by the height in each of those. So one half times the height multiplied by x plus y. 
and x plus y is equal to what length on the big triangle? The base b. So if x plus y is equal to b, then we can say that this is one half. Change the order of the multiplication for the base times the height. So it still works. Okay, one other scenario. That kind of a triangle, an obtuse triangle. Obtuse triangles, this is kind of a weird one. But if, you know, um, I want to try to draw this a little bit nicer. Here's an obtuse triangle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the, what I'm going to call the base. And then we're going to, we're going to, have to draw in. Here's a height. And that height's outside of the triangle. So the, the first two of the height was on the inside of the triangle. Now the height has to be drawn outside. And this one, this one's a little a little bit different. We use the same formula though. It's still half of the base times the height. And this is why. So if you look where I made this little mark with x as a base, this is like a right triangle, isn't it? This, just this small one here outside of the main triangle. That's a right triangle. That right triangle is what we have to subtract from a really big right triangle that would include both of these together. So if we took both of these together, this is a right triangle, which is base times height divided by 2. And then if we subtract that smaller one, we'll have what's left. So here's how we can do that. The, huge, the larger right triangle has a base of B plus X. So it's half of the height multiplied by B plus X. So B plus X would be the longer base of the imaginary larger triangle. And we can rewrite this using the distributive property. And if we did that, that would be one half of the height multiplied by b plus half of the height multiplied by x. So this here is this big triangle. And then we have to subtract this smaller triangle on the end to end up with only that original triangle. So we take this amount here, and now we're going to subtract b times x times a half. So that's a half. I'm sorry, not b times x, h times x, the height times x. Why is it one half? Because it's a triangle. So here's the base x and the height of this small triangle. That's what we're subtracting from the large one. So half of hx minus half of hx is 0. So now we're down to the triangle here is half of the height times the base or half of the base times the height. And this is the base. It only measures from here to here. And this is the height.
asked for the proofs for today. Those are actually, we could write those out in a proof form. It's, it's an algebraic proof of why all triangles have an area of one half the base times the height. So for you, with the work, it's to interpret what is the base, what is the height, to identify them. And be careful, because sometimes they give us way too much information in the problems. They might give us the hypotenuse of a, of a right triangle, and that hypotenuse is not a part of the area calculation. It's only a part of perimeter, not area. So be aware of that. Question? Four minutes. It's not done. Yeah. You could be me at what? Tic tac toe, but there's it's four lines. <laughs> Tic tac toe, but it's four lines. Uh, right. I just have to ask you yes or no. Have you seen this one yet? Yes. yes. Oh, you did? Okay. That's easy. So in your homework, you would be... Right there. 1 to 10, 14, 18, and 19. caveat for you. You can eliminate any two of those problems. If you calculate the area of each of those golden colored triangles on that image. You can eliminate any two problems if you try to do that. I challenge you to do that. It's, it's just it's just base times height divided by two. Um, yes, I get Mary's back though, right? <laughs> 